part and then the whole objective of today is to make sure that we are answering questions and talking through issues together uh, the thing i love about working with andy and stephanie is the fact that they know that this is all a work in progress and our goals and our objectives at 95 network is to be a great resource to help us uh, to make the evolution into where we're going next and, and obviously uh, moving forward. Uh, we are not out of the pandemic yet, but things are beginning to, you can feel a thaw happening, I guess is the best way to say it. And so um, I want to help you guys. I want to help you find what you need. I want to help you find uh, the resources you need. One of the, the, the most important things we do at 95 is to try to connect you with the people you need. Uh, we do not have all the answers and not, don't to pretend to have all the answers but we do want to help connect you. And so we just want to kind of talk through a little bit of what's happening uh, as we are evolving toward doing a really effective hybrid church. And hybrid church is simply this, it's doing the very best you can in person, your in-person experience being the best it can be, and then doing the very best you can with online. And one of the mistakes I think a lot of churches are making is they're so focused on, on connecting with new people and reaching the lost and which is, that's, you, what'd you say, Dale? Just listen. Yeah. They're, they're so focused on being a, a place to connect people that when they get them to their church, they don't have anything to offer them. There's, they don't have anything in place so they can stay connected, you know? And so that's why I love what Andy and Stephanie are doing at Ultra Live. Uh, I love how they're trying to help churches to get connected um, through the online experience. And so uh, we want to kind of dive in a little bit about just some stuff that was some good testimonies we're hearing, and then just uh, spend the rest of our hour together, just talking through anything we can. And, and if we don't know the answer today, don't get frustrated. We will help you find it. Okay. That's just where we are. So Andy and Stephanie, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Dale. Thanks everybody for coming. For having us. Uh, in case anybody's on today, this is their first experience. Uh, Stephanie, take a few minutes and tell us a little bit about uh, about Ultra Live. Yeah, well, very nice to meet you all. I'm Stephanie Antonucci Lee, um, and uh, Andy and I are both uh, on the team for Ultra Live. We are an online event uh, platform designed specifically for churches. Uh, we got started. Andy and I's background is both in entrepreneurship and tech companies. Um, but uh, during the pandemic, we undertook the, the small uh, task of trying to reimagine the way that churches gather online. Uh, it's been a, quite a journey. Dale's been with us for a lot of this. Um, we got started really in earnest back in June last year, um, developing a platform to try to meet the needs of churches, trying to connect their people more authentically in online spaces. Um, if I was to summarize what Alter is, if you've if you've never um, seen it before, it's like bringing the best of Zoom meets the best of something like YouTube, Facebook, or the church online platform into the same experience. Um, what we really saw the need that churches were struggling with is that you can get your content online, but uh, there's no way to really go deeper with people beyond the chat comment section. So Alter was built to try to reproduce um, that living room feel. Uh, imagine, you know, the, the things that we've lost, like bumping into people in the hallways, um, being able to quickly pull somebody aside after or before or during a service um, to pray with someone, uh, that, that opportunity to actually connect on a more personal level. So uh, the platform brings together video conferencing features as well as live stream features um, to create a seamless experience for people to really engage with one another. So um, that's uh, me. My technical title is CEO. Andy can introduce himself as well. Hi, I've got a great title. It's called uh, Technology Evangelist, which I gave to myself. Um, and actually, I've had that title in other software companies where I've been, because uh, what I really delight in is where uh, it, it's not the, the technology itself per se, but more about technology that has a, a large impact on uh, behaviors, whether it's on individual behavior, organizational behavior, even um, even cultural behavior. Uh, so um, the internet, you've heard of the internet. So I was a, I was the internet evangelist uh, way back then. Uh, I worked at a mobile phone company. Um, so mobile was having a, obviously a big impact. Um, so when I joined Alter Live, uh, I actually, uh, a friend of mine um, simply, um, pointed them out uh, and said, oh, there's a company that's starting and um, why don't you take a look at their website, they're building it and uh, give them a little help, you know, like tweaking some words or something like that. And um, and my eyes got very, very big when I saw what Alter Live was doing. Um, and uh, 
I just invited myself to work there. Uh, so uh, that's been that's been great so far. And um, this, so I'm I'm 58 years old, and uh, I've been a lifetime churchgoer and got serious when I had an encounter with Jesus when I was around 39. Um, and uh, so Stephanie and I, uh, Stephanie and I um, talked about the website a little bit. And, um, and then I was like, do you, now, do you go to church? Do you like, I just want to make sure, do you go to church? And she goes, oh, I go to church. I'm like, okay, where do you go to church? And it turns out we go to the same church. Um, <laughs> we're, at, we're at different campuses, so it's okay. We, didn't, we haven't been ignoring and missing each other for, for 15 years. Uh, but um, uh, it's, been a, it's been a great ride. This has been the best job I ever had, uh, not to talk about myself too much, but it combines my vocation and my avocation. Um, and talking to church leaders like yourselves, uh, all day and all week long, and, and then also Dale. Um, that's uh, that's been a real treat. It's uh, it's it's great company. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been great meeting you guys. I I, I just saw hey, there's a need. Uh, here we are uh, specifically as we lead small and mid-sized churches, and we want to we want to do the best we can. Everybody that's on this call today has a desire to minister to their people and help their people. And I imagine everybody on this call today is also pretty exhausted because this has been such a, a trying time in our lives, a trying time in our churches. So, uh, Andy, you had a few uh, wins, a few stories you were sharing with me earlier. Uh, kind of share a couple of things that have happened. Today is not going to be focused specifically on all the technical things that we do. We just want to talk about what we can do to connect with people, share some wins. We'd love to hear some of your wins, and then try to kind of walk through, you know, what are you running into that we could, maybe these experts can help with, and if we don't, know the answers I said earlier, we'll try to find the answer. So Andy, share some of those wins you were talking about to me uh, a few weeks, a few days ago. All right, great. Well, some of my favorite stories. Uh, yeah. So as you might imagine, as uh, churches get up and running with Alter Live, um, we, we come alongside them and help them bootstrap. Uh, first couple of Sundays, we'll drop in um, just as a, a guest of the church and ask people how they're doing, if they're having any trouble helping them uh, acclimate. And we, we come across some really wonderful uh, experiences there. Um, there's one, uh, one in particular, uh, and actually I have, a, I have a picture of it, so I'm going to share my screen. So this is, this is a little bit of a picture of Alter Live. I won't explain everything that's in there unless you ask questions, um, but the, one of the ideas is that after service, uh, there's a chance to meet at tables for coffee hour. Uh, and so this is a table that I joined. Uh, Am I wearing, I'm not wearing the same sweater, so that's nice. Um, and when I joined this table, uh, there were two women there, two uh, 20-something women. Uh, they're friends. Uh, they've been going to this church for about three or four years. Uh, they don't live in the same house. And when I joined them, it was just the three of us, and they said that um, they are both uh, self-described introverts. Uh, I'm an extrovert, so I don't know how welcome I was at the table. <laughs> and they said, um, you know, uh, when church ends, we just leave. Uh, we don't go down to the the, the fellowship area. Uh, all that kind of how are you? How's your weekend? And all that low level chit chat. That's just not their that's not their thing. That takes a lot of energy for them. Uh, so they do they would just rather go out and have brunch together or something like that. Um, and they said, but this feels good. This feels safe. That was actually a word that they used. Uh, so we actually, I, I think we'll we'll stay after every week uh, here in Alter Live um, because they're not going to get bombarded by a whole bunch of well-wishers, <laughs> they just don't have any need for them right now. Um, and they can just have um, a, a quickly what they would call a meaningful conversation. As an extrovert, I find that the chit chat is also meaningful, uh, but for them, they like, we'll get right into the meat of something. Uh, so that was really encouraging uh, for us uh, to hear that introverts are now sticking around at church uh, afterwards. So that was great. You see that there's a, a fourth square there at the table. Um, and so this is a, a woman who goes to that church uh, along with her husband. Um, she's been going there for 20, 25 years, something like that. And uh, as you can see, she's, she's my age. Uh, and so when she joined this table, she actually had uh, her small dog in her arms. Uh, and so this woman here, uh, she said, oh, a dog. <laughs> she's like, the only thing that's getting me through this pandemic is when I get on a Zoom call during the week and someone brings their little child or dog on camera. It just makes my day and fills my tank. So it's just a great little little story. And so she was very happy to, to see the dog. Well, the other 20 something, she says, oh, I have my dog with me right here. And she tilted her laptop and pointed it at the dog on, on the floor there. And all of a sudden we're talking dogs. And I also have a dog, uh, which you'll probably hear in the background at some point. Uh, so I tilted my laptop too and showed my dog. So there's three dog owners and a dog lover 
uh, on the line. And we're talking dogs and having a grand old time. So the interesting thing about this is the, um, the 50 something woman uh, has seen these two young women at the church for three or four years. And the extent of their relationship has been uh, a little bit of eye contact and a wave and hello, and that's it. That, that, that's the sum total of their, of their relationship, uh, three, four years at this church together. But now they spent 40 minutes together at this table and the dogs were the kind of special elixir that melted whatever sort of, not even awkwardness, but just it, like they got brought together and immediately, you know, like you can see the back of my house right now. So you might see a cookbook, but there's some, I, I put all my Bibles up there. So I look like I'm a church goer. Um, but uh, Stephanie's there and she's got certain plants back there. Um, so whatever it is, maybe I'm wearing a sports hat. I think Clint was wearing a sports hat. I was going to ask him about, right? So there's all sorts of things that I probably wouldn't bring to church. I don't bring my dog or my cookbook or my plants or my, or, or my sports shirt. Although maybe some churches do wear your sports shirt. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a real conversation started that crosses it, it, it. In this instance, it was an intergenerational crossing. Um, uh, and that is probably something that the pastor of that church has been trying to get going with all sorts of gimmicks and techniques and events, like how do we get the older folks to talk with the younger folks? Or how do we get people who would never cross paths to cross paths? And so we'll try to assign people to groups and things like that. Um, so for me, this was one of the most warming and rewarding uh, things that I have seen uh, uh, since, uh, since working uh, in, in the pandemic with churches. Uh, so this, so lots of other heartwarming stories I'm sure you've also had about people who are you know, they're, they're shut-ins or they're, 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 they're introverts who, you know, don't usually get their time to shine in the church. Uh, they get outshone by, uh, uh, by the extroverts. Uh, maybe people who are volunteering for, that had never volunteered before, um, along with, of course, you know, all of the, um, all of their difficult things uh, that, that have come with the pandemic. Uh, so at any rate, that's my, that's my go-to story. <laughs> um, and uh, if my dog participates, he'll, uh, I'll, I'll put him on camera and we can all have, we can all talk dogs for about two minutes if we need to. Yeah, yeah we probably won't do that today. Uh, <laughs> so here's the biggest thing I want everybody to get from the hybrid church focus. Uh, it, it's as we do, as we lead our churches, it's not either or. What we've, the approach has been in the past is that, okay, either, you know, it's either about doing a great in-person experience, forget about the online, or there's been the shift toward really focusing on the online uh, and, and not giving as much attention to what you do uh, in person. We want you to do great at both. And so the, this is the reason that the 95 Network is connected with these guys and working with them because they help you do this online experience better, uh, to especially to, to draw in people maybe who don't attend your churches and stuff. So what I want to do right now is just go, hey, if you got a question, a specific question or an issue you're running into, uh, if you would just maybe just lift up your hand there and then unmute and let's see if we can talk through together some things that you may be experiencing and we can we can kind of glean from each other. So uh, anybody got anything specific you want to dive into? Go, yeah, Rusty, go ahead. Got your mic on, Rusty. There we go. Okay. Well, obviously what we're doing right now isn't working as well as what we would all like it to work. And, uh, you know, it looks like the table feature at least uh, gives people little rooms within the platform, one, one click, one platform, multiple rooms to tables to hang out with. Um, that's good because if you're you give out a link and you're doing a virtual thing of some kind and you get 10, 20, 30 plus people in there, the, uh, there's only so many people who talk at one time, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, you're allowing more, uh, conversation to take place. Um, you know, people can bring their dogs to our sessions right now, introverts <laughs> can be introverts right now. But the thing is, is only so many people can talk at one time. We got what, 18 people on here. I'm talking right now. Y'all can't. Uh, now you could, but then nobody hears anybody, you know, so I get it. I, I get that. Um, you know, it's nice having a church to where we could say the only dress code is be clothed. I mean, be clothed. It's just yeah, not, that's a needed. good one too. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> but, um, but really, I mean, we already have all that. Uh, the only thing I'm seeing right now that's new is the option to have lots of people one link, multiple tables 
so more people can chat and sit at the table they want to chat at, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. That's the so, that's the dynamic that is missing from a lot of the online, whether it's Zoom or if it's on Facebook or or, or uh, Church Online or something like that. That's uh, it's a, it's that dynamic that's been that you we aimed for the dynamic that you experience in church already when you choose to sit next to certain people or during a coffee hour, which is a little more fluid. Um, and then there are new things that we're discovering, like the dogs in church thing. Um, so that's a, we, we think that's something that is kind of like an emergent property of, uh, of the online church. Yeah, we're trying our best to create an opportunity for just people to connect and, and maybe even meet new people. And the thing about all these, the tables or the gathering places, the prayer places, whatever, you you can change out and you interact and you can go visit different people as well. So there's a, there's a, the way we're trying our best to find a way to create community in the online setting. And, and this is not in place of gathering in person, but in addition to gathering in person. So I kind of, I kind of look at it like, like, we have a fellowship hall and we have all these coffee tables and there's people all over the room and it's kind of like an aerial shot of that room. And then I could just kind of drop down on any table I want, which is kind of cool. I could drop in over here as a pastor, say hi, drop over here. So it's actually really easy for a pastor to meet a lot of people. So it, that's kind of cool. Um, now, if you were wanting more people at a table, uh, you know, than four, it looked like they were settings of just four. Um, or if you were talking small groups, now you're looking at what instead of tables, you're looking at rooms, right? I mean, how does that work? It's a good question. Yeah, technologically, we've just limited to four for um, the uh, just scaling the platform. They will increase over time so that you'll you can have bigger capacity at tables and then like you mentioned to rooms after you get over eight people, it really is more like a room than a table. Um, so that, that kind of increase of capacity will come as well. That's a good question. Because I guess my thought is, is if you have one link, okay. And that one link is a post-service and pre-service hangout or uh, whatever gathering. If you want to make it classes or groups or seminars or teaching, then you got to have multiple where people could just drop into those, right? Right, correct. And we haven't actually even shown you, there's two states in every event and Andy could probably share a screen of it again. Um, there's the event state where your live stream feed can play and we have what's called the pew view um, where people can select seats together to watch a live stream feed or whatever content that you have going um, in, the same, uh, in the same way. Oh, Andy, I think it's the other, other uh, browser. Other one. Um, so uh, we can still see you in oh, there. You go. Um, yeah, it's a good question. We can show that too. Well, while Andy's pulling that up, I, a question for you all is um, and kind of taking a big picture again uh, as open conversation. Do you feel like you have a pulse on where what your people are wanting in terms of connection or community together, um, either positive examples that they've been able to find that in the in the past few months uh, in more creative ways than they maybe traditionally did before because they can't gather as easily in person, or are there areas that are you still feel like are uh, unknowns? There's a group of people that you're not actually sure how they're feeling about. Are they feeling connected or disconnected? Um, I'm just curious from your perspective, uh, what, what you see in your own congregations. Let me drive this. What I'll do is I just want to call on you individually. Mm -hmm. And if you could just answer that question, it would be really helpful. So Bill, let me start with you. What, what are you seeing? There we are. There we go. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to answer because everything is it, there's it, it depends on which group of people I'm talking about in, in my demographic. Mm -hmm. um, you senior citizens have a greater degree of fear about their health and their well being. Um, and so they are disconnected from the in person, but they are also technologically disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, maybe later in the conversation, if, if Andy or Stephanie can address the 
the simplicity of the program because if it's very complicated at all, my folks will get lost. Mm -hmm. um, my younger people have been, um, oh, say through caution to the wind. They're here in person. Uh, we, we have uh, a couple of small groups still operating in home and, and folks are participating in that so that they still have the face-to-face. -face. Um, so it really depends on the demographic within my congregation that I'm addressing, but two totally different things. Uh, younger people, hey, we're good. Older people, uh, still quite disconnected. And uh, I fear for them, just to be honest. So. Yeah. So we make sure, uh, Bill, make sure we answer that before we get off today, okay? Travis, what are you seeing? Yeah, I definitely agree with uh, uh, Bill on that as far as uh, uh, most of the uh, biggest percentage of our people have come back to church. I'm in Tennessee. Uh, it's a little different here than uh, some of the other states where most people, have, like you said, have thrown caution to the wind unless they're more elderly or have health concerns. And I would reiterate what Bill said, I think. The issue would be the people who need it the most are the technologically challenged and are going to have the most trouble figuring out how things out. And so that I think is uh, definitely uh, something that would need to be addressed. Uh, Bill, where, where, where are you at? I'm, I'll, I'll make sure I ask this for everybody else. What, what state are you in? I'm in Illinois. I'm in a suburb of Peoria. Okay. All right. So Bill's in Illinois. Travis is in um, Tennessee. Rusty is in Illinois. Josh, uh, what are you seeing? I think um, to echo a lot of what they're you're saying. You're in Ohio, right? I'm in Ohio. Yep. Okay. And um, anything that I'm going to use with my older folks who aren't coming has got to be incredibly simple. Um, we probably spent, I did a lot of uh, back in March and April when everything was closed, closed, a lot of long phone calls explaining to people just how to log on to YouTube or log on to our church. You know, like we currently have our live stream embedded on our homepage, like not even an extra link. So they can just go to our homepage and scroll all the way to the bottom. And when we're live, they can see it because a lot of my, you know, 70 and 80 year olds are the ones who aren't coming and anything more complicated than that. And they, they struggle. Um, I think a lot of our folks who are back are just, it's not so much caution to the wind. They're just not going to accept anything. That's a substitute. Um, they're tired of half measures and they're tired of, um, anything that kind of feels like a fake version of church to them for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. And so, yep. um, there's just not, if they watch the live stream, cause they're not here one Sunday, like they're not interested in interacting. They're not interested in commenting. I mean, maybe something like ultra live would fix some of that, but, uh, I have a lot of people who are just, they're just tired of things that don't feel like what they want them to feel like. Um, so and kind of half measures of stuff. That's yeah. really good. The one, so of course, um, our, our perspective is a little bit off to the side because we see the ones who make it in. We don't see the ones who don't make it in, right? And so they tell us, like, the ones we see, they're like, oh, I found this very easy, right? Um, so there's probably a bell curve, uh, even amongst that demographic, uh, where they're just either willing to try more or they, act, they actually are, they have some measure of tech savviness. Uh, and the ones who don't, you know, you may not hear from. We, we have worked with one church that has a very cool ministry uh that's born of covid um they call them tech deacons and mm -hmm. uh so they'll identify you know each deacon uh will identify two three four people in the congregation who they think probably could use a little bit of help and it's anything from how do i connect to the internet to you know how do i navigate through a browser or you know how do i chat in facebook or, or something like that um, now, I don't know exactly how they get together, if they do something face-to-face -face with masks on or something like that, but um, they happen to be in Silicon Valley, so they probably had a lot of people who raised their hand that said, I'll be a tech deacon. <laughs> right? yeah, have it um, the, one of the nice things it, was that they found that it was people who in the, in the past had not volunteered for a lot of things, hmm. but they're like, well, I can do that. So there was a silver lining to it. So it doesn't solve everything. And I don't know if they solved all of their, you know, their demographic issues with uh, tech savviness, but that was one thing that they put into place. And the thing I want all of us to be encouraged by is that guys, this is all a work in progress and we're figuring out as we go. And so uh, I know you've been re required or asked of to give in areas that a lot of times you don't even know what to give. 
And so that's why we want to do these type events is to continue to encourage you. And, and, and we're going to find all the answers that we need to find. Uh, it may take us a while. Matthew, what are you guys seeing or what are you experiencing? And, and tell us where you're from. Uh, I'm from Ontario, uh, up here in Canada. And uh, so, yeah, for us, I think it's a range of experiences. Um, we're trying to push. We have a group who just uh, won't get online. So we try to call them and stay connected that way and just don't even bother pushing them because they don't want to. So I don't worry about them mm -hmm. um, on this area of, of things. Um, but we're trying to engage our, our kids programs, developed a program for kids to watch things on Sunday during service. We do a little video as well. So we're, we're live stream. We, we, at the moment can't, well, yeah, the regulations are kind of changing every day. So we, at least today, uh, we can, we can have 30% of our people come into the building. Um, but we can't, um, <clears throat> uh, so anyway, so we're just gonna, we're staying online. So we're just trying to figure out one of the questions I I'm wrestling with is constantly is just how to yeah get more to to engage online so I have a few small groups have started to listen and are trying to meet through different you know whether it's Facebook groups or or, um, or messenger sorry or zoom or some other technologies we've released to them right now media has a group element to it and so there, those are ways that um, you know, for me I don't care what it, <laughs> what program they use uh, just connect Yes. And so um, th there's another side too that people are just kind of tired. Yeah. So, you know, our yeah, kids yeah. were in Zoom school for like, they literally just went back this year. So um, our youth program has been meeting online, um, I guess the last four months now. Um, their numbers are starting to go down, but I think it's school related. So it's, um, I think it's just figuring that balance out of, of where people are at mm -hmm. um so yeah that's good nate where are you located and what are you uh running into uh i'm i'm with rusty <laughs> okay so, so you're in the other room okay <laughs> yeah well no i'm i'm at my house but no i'm also in illinois with rusty okay. but yeah um, so as, as far as people uh, getting online yeah it's 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 kind of tough i mean we're, we're pretty new to it you know obviously with all the covid stuff so mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely it's definitely a learning experience right now so anything that would make it easier for uh uh tech staff because we're a lot of people uh we're limited by the people because i think they're scared of it and that's why uh, we need to look at something well i tell you i love that tech uh that tech deacons thing i'm gonna dive into that a little bit so todd where are you at and what are you experiencing I am in Kalamazoo, Michigan area, and mine, I guess, is a little bit unique in the sense I started at my church the week that the world shut down last March. And <laughs> welcome, was, welcome aboard, right? Congratulations. I, I brought all my stuff to the church office, put it on the shelves the next day, grabbed it, brought it back home. <laughs> but uh, we're unique in the sense that I inherited a, a small church that had some difficulties and lost most all of their young families uh, before I came. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of weird because regularly we'll have 30 to 40 people in person every week and they're all gray haired, all old with the mindset that I was taught as a kid that if church is open on Sunday, you go. Doesn't matter if you're sick, doesn't matter what the deal is. Doors are open, we're going. A couple of the families that have younger kids uh, do not choose to go. And so we did something that I have a, this is going to lead to a question for you guys. We started with me just doing an online service that was recording our in-person service, calling it good. Realized that that was horrible. And so I changed gears and created a different version for our online church. And it's basically me sitting here in my home office with this background and creating a 30 minute long church service that doesn't have all the stuff that the home uh, viewers would find to, well, I found they were just fast forwarding through them actually. Mm -hmm. So I, I created this uh, stuff and it worked. 
And what I found is that I now have 30 to 40 people in person every week, but I probably regularly have at least 50 or more people that have become digital disciples. Some of them are tithing every week and they're people who will probably, because of geography, never step foot in our church. Every week we have people from South Africa, people from the east side of Michigan, people from North Carolina, people from um, out west that every single week are part of our church and kind of call us their church, but we're never going to see them walk through the doors and gather with us. And so one of the things that I'm working on right now is trying to figure out ways to take those people that are our digital disciples and disciple them. And other than I've done some online like teachings, uh, almost like a small group setting, but I'm trying to figure out how, it's almost like I have two different churches, honestly, and I treat them totally different in a sense. And I'm trying to I kind of like my online church better than I do my person, to be honest. Um, though I jive with those people a lot better. <laughs> I um, forgot to but, tell you that we are recording this. So the, that's yeah, so hopefully it. none of them see this. Um, I love all of them if they do. But so that's where I'm I'm trying to get some clarity right now is in my unique situation. I'm running two different churches in China. And the in-person one is really easy. Um, the online one is a lot more fun, a lot more invigorating, but I'm trying to figure out ways right now to create connection and create ways to help them take their next steps in their faith. That's so good. One of the things I've been encouraging our pastors to do is as we move into this 2021 year is to change our rhythm of how we do our week. So that, uh, you know, you already have, you know, a lot of you will, will gather, still come in on Monday. Uh, sometimes we do staff meetings or whatever and, and, and take Friday off. Some people take Monday off and then Friday, but whatever the rhythm of your week is, uh, you've got to, I believe, I would love for you to take an entire day and you may just can't do that, but block an, a half a day of your week that's dedicated to your online content, your online focus, because there, there, there's going to be more and more and more. There are a lot of great things available now that could help you, Todd, but there's, there's more and more and more as we discover ways to connect with our people that's going to come our way that, uh, that you, you just can't do on the fly. Uh, you know, and I loved what you said there, though. You said it's invigorating to you. And I think that's really cool uh, that that you see this challenge is not something that's insurmountable, but a chance to really connect with a, a new group of people in, in a, a different way. Stephen, tell us where you're at and what you're uh, what you're experiencing. So I'm in uh, Somerset, Pennsylvania, so it's South Central. Um, and uh, basically, uh, a lot of our people are technology exhausted uh, with schools being online, uh, even see that in kids, which is kind of they're ready to set down their cell phones and iPads as well. Um, so uh, looking basically to just streamline um, what we're doing right now, trying to find it easy. Uh, I'm not fortunate enough to have a tech team, so it's basically on me. Um, so I've found that people are dropping off of Facebook, um, getting out of it completely uh, due to different stuff going mm -hmm. on. So an easy way to, to stream to one site, I like the aspect of connection uh, with Alter. I think it's great, um, but that overwhelms me mm -hmm. <laughs> as, a, as the person doing it at this point. So um, just you know, searching through it a little bit, I think it's a great. Uh, I think it would be great to move that way, um, mm -hmm. but... Uh, easy use, just like what everybody's saying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if my older people can just jump on, cause they're the ones not coming. My young people are back. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's the biggest thing. Cool. Why, why so do you good. think people are, are dropping from uh, your Facebook? You said there were a number of reasons. And... Oh, I think just the politicalness of the oh, past right. okay. year yes, yes, yes. that Politics. they've just stopped and they've taken right. a break and um, either dropped it completely uh, probably healthy. Guy, it's probably healthy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've considered it, but I like to see what my people are talking about. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, um, 
notice that like our, our YouTube kind of increased a little bit, you know, so it's just, I need something streamlined, easy. Okay. Hey, Clint, where are you at? And uh, what are you experiencing? Uh, hi, I'm in uh, Southwest Oregon, um, in the middle of nowhere, actually, but I'm surrounded by mountains. So that's a, a difference from Texas. Um, <laughs> We're running about 50% capacity, not 50% capacity, 50% of uh, COVID attendance prior. Um, and it's pretty balanced. And what I have noticed is that the 60, 70, and 80 year olds sit near the front and the young families sit in the back of the room. Um, so I, I, there doesn't appear to be a delineation between this age is showing up and this age isn't. However, the ones that are not showing up on Sunday morning have decided to come in face to face and introduce themselves to me uh, and tell me, you know, we're not going to be attending, but we wanted to you know, meet you. I've, I've only been here about five weeks. Um, so it's hard to gauge um, where they all are. I do know that it's a difficult place, the way the building is situated to have some really good, uh, you know, like Rusty was talking about the fellowship area. And I know that I used to work with him there too, that, uh, they've got a great fellowship area that leads right into their worship center there. I don't have anything like that. We have entrances on each side that lead right in and the fellowship area is in the basement and none of that's being used right now. Um, so it's hard to say, you know, we're not set up well for that kind of fellowship uh, gathering right before or right after service, unless they get into a habit of changing our culture to where they want to travel down there and come back and forth. And that's something I think we will do soon. Hmm. But Oregon is a little different in that. I think they're allowing more people in now to the building than some of you all are having with your restrictions. Um, I noticed that we, we started doing, uh, I've been doing daily devotionals on Facebook in Texas. And since I moved here since about April, um, and they, they built a Facebook group here that sent out a lot of invites. And I have about 80 people that, uh, daily, uh, listen to these daily devotionals that are about three and a half to five minutes. That's been a real contact point for me here because I, I noticed that probably 50% of those people are not church attenders here. And so, uh, that's getting my face into the community a little bit as well as uh, just a reminder that Coquille, this church is, is still trying to make an effort to reach out to the community. So that's been a real positive for us. And uh, the, the thing that might be restrictive about it is we've been sending invites out to people to join that group. I go ahead and I put those uh, videos on my personal Facebook stream as well, but um, I'm not sure if there's a better way to make it public for the area or not at this time. Um, but that's been a real positive thing for us. The negative thing that I see going on here with streaming and our, our internet presence is that there's a fear of live service. And by that, I mean, they're just afraid something's going to go wrong if we're streaming our Sunday morning service. So they are right now, what I do is every Thursday I record a message I preach to an empty room that they record. And then later that night, we record a worship set with the band. And then uh, Sunday morning, we'll go and we'll have a regular worship service, but then they'll stream that thing we recorded on Thursday night after it's been edited and polished. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, I hate it <laughs> because it, it doesn't feel the same. I, you know, my, the sermon, I'll go back and watch it. It's completely different than preaching to a live room with response and stuff like that. So we have a fear here uh, of going live. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that I think is a battle that, uh, that I'm starting to wage war against. Um, but uh, I haven't, you know, put my foot down yet. Um, so that's, you, that's where we you are. Could always, you could always do the live thing and then just have the, the other as a backup and, and, and that, use that to, to kind of, yeah, to kind of ease them into it. So that's, that's great, dude. And, and, you know, I've watched a lot of your, uh, a lot of your Facebook things. I mean, I don't know anybody that's been more faithful and consistent than Clint. He's been putting it out there ever since this thing happened. So yeah. thank you so much for doing that. Chris, where are you at and what are you, what are you seeing? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Just want to make sure. Uh -huh. um, I'm in Aiken, Minnesota. So I'm two hours north of the Twin Cities in the lakes area of Minnesota. So we're about 30 miles from Brainerd, Minnesota. Um, 
in literally the middle of nowhere, very rural, 12 miles out of town. And you have to drive down a gravel road and park in a grass lot at my church. So and people ride and people like to ride snowmobiles to church where I live because it's Minnesota. That's so cool. But uh, we don't do that in South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Some areas you might be able to water ski or jet ski there. <laughs> but uh, what I'm seeing is we have had tremendous growth and engagement online during COVID. We have gone from we were at about 100 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Um, I looked yesterday and we were at 699 subscribers. Wow. So we've grown by, give or take, 600 subscribe in, in a year. And in a church that averages 100 people, that's, that's a remarkable rate of growth. Um, we've not seen quite the same, but still pretty ridiculous growth on Facebook connections as well. So seeing a lot of good digital connections there, we went back to meeting in person July 5th. So we've been in person since then and are running give or take 65 or 70 people on a good Sunday. A small Sunday is about 50. So somewhere in that 60, 65 range is probably our average currently, which is down you know, a good 40 to 50 people um, my people have been really good in connecting with me anyhow in response to if, if they're not there in person, they have commented on our posts on Facebook or commented on YouTube or sent me text messages or, or emails or whatever, responding to questions I've asked or, or whatever within the context of the sermon. And so seeing decent engagement with that. Um, surprisingly pleased actually with how well that's gone knowing the, the primary age range of those people who aren't coming to my church are the older people in my church, my younger families. It, it, it's kind of impressive honestly when I, I'm on stage looking out almost everybody's young at the moment because a lot of my young, older people are, are choosing to stay home mm -hmm. and which is really a, a, a shift and change um, at least in appearance. Now it's, it's just because there's people not in the room, but we have grown by young families coming to our church during COVID and we've added a number of young families in this time. So, you know, I, I hear a lot of my fellow pastors um, complaining about burnout and, and struggling and, and yeah, we were $50,000 short on our budget this year. And, you know, we, we've had challenges, but I'm celebrating the wins. I think God's been doing good things and I'm I'm preaching vision every single week and casting that vision and, and just saying, hey, God's still at work and we're still doing good things and keep giving, keep loving, keep serving, even if it's at a distance. And, uh, you know, I, I've got the accelerator down. We're, we're planning on building an outdoor space um, outside of our church on the property this summer. Um, wish we could have done it last year. It would have been very useful during COVID, but we just didn't have the opportunity to ramp that up. We didn't know what the world was going to be like. Mm -hmm. Now a year into COVID, um, we are building a kind of a pavilion space with picnic tables. Uh, we're going to put a campfire ring out there with a long term of, we, we have a playground, but it's, it's a high end home quality playground, not a commercial playground. Yeah. So, you know, I've cast that vision. We're going to be adding a commercial playground um, because, again, we're 12 miles out of town. Any young family near us has nowhere to go to a park to play. They don't exist where we live. Wow. So we're going to create the park and, and bring them to the church and see what God does with that. So that, we're, we're doing that stuff. That's kind of all over the map. I it's guess. so yeah. cool to hear, though, you've been experiencing success because if someone have told me that you were out in the boonies of Minnesota, I would have thought you would have said the total opposite of everything you've said. Yeah. So that's yeah. really encouraging to hear. That's really, really good. God's awesome. on the move. Yeah. That's cool. Hey, Justin, uh, I don't see your face, but uh, well, well, where, where are you from and what are you, uh, what are you experiencing? Hey Dale, I apologize. I am here. There you um, are. In and out of in and out of meetings, so I didn't want to be disrespectful. That's fine. Um, but yes, we are in Green, New York, upstate New York. Um, New York has not had COVID, so we're just doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys haven't had any Denial's issues at all in New York, have you? <laughs> uh, would you help me with the question? 
we just were talking about what are the unique challenges that you guys are, are still confronting that we can talk through together or, and you may be doing great and not having any challenges. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. So we are a multi-site ministry. We're rural. We have campuses um, across the area. We're back in person. We have been back since last June, but we're running about 50% in person. Um, online, we've changed a lot with how we do it online. We do a hybrid approach of live teaching with pre-recorded music, and that's actually working. It's allowing our music quality to be much better than the live. We just don't have the capacity to mix it properly. Um, we're also able to kind of merge in, like Sunday, we did a baptism, so we were able to do live. Oh, that's um, cool baptism kind of added into that online stream. We're using tons of channels for online. We're using Facebook Live, we're using YouTube, we're using um, BoxCast, we're using our website, and we're kind of tracking data across all the platforms. And we're just kind of viewing it like we have multiple online campuses and some things work for some people and others work for others. So we've really tried a boatload approach and maybe someday we'll simplify it down. Mm -hmm. But uh, overall, um, we've just learned a ton and we're still learning, still asking a bunch of questions. I think our main challenge right now is just fatigue. Mm -hmm. We've got enormous staff and volunteer fatigue. We're dealing with skeleton crews for kids ministries. Um, a lot of people are kind of wanting to ride out the pandemic before they return to serve. Mm -hmm. um, but the kids are longing to be with peers. And yep. so kids are surging back on Sundays, they're surging back on Wednesdays, and parents are actually using youth ministry as a discipline, like if you're not good, you're not going to be allowed to go to youth ministry. <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of opposite, yeah. um, and it's funny, but we may not be able to sustain a lot of the kids in youth ministries this summer and fall just for purely uh, yeah. lack of volunteers. Cool. So trying to help our staff just be realistic and say, look, we don't know when all this is ending. We don't know what it's going to look like. Um, we don't want you to burn out. So we'll just shut things down um, that we can't sustain there you go. rather than burn out the few people that are helping and just be realistic about it. And we're not going to make public appeals for volunteers and beat people down and get the wrong people serving. Mm. So just kind of resetting all of our projections, trying not to make projections that make us look like weathermen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just kind of resetting our expectations. I think that's been a huge thing for us is not having the same expectations that we used to have and being okay with that. That's so good. Uh, before we, I want to make sure we, there's two or three things I want to get done before we run out of time and you just open the door to something. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that, that most of our churches are experiencing as they get back to in-person is a, a, a huge, huge loss of volunteers. And, and, and so uh, one of the things we've begun to add, and if you are a member of 95 Network or you keep up with us, you're going to see this. We've added a, a staff position uh, with a lady named Marianne Sibley. And Marianne has a ministry that she does to, train to help you with training volunteers, guest services, and just the whole hospitality side of things. Because a lot of churches, uh, we had a, we had a, we recorded this week with Rich Birch on our 95 podcast, and he talked about this has been the number one issue that churches are experiencing as they are trying to get back integrated to meeting again is just a huge lack of volunteers. And so, just from my experience, one of the things I want to speak to you is this: it's better for us to do one or two things really, really well than to do 20 things poorly. And so I love what you just said, Justin. Sometimes we just have to pour, we have to pare it down, pull it back, and just really make sure we're, we, whatever we are offering, that we do a great job with that. And so um, as you move forward, uh, if we can help you uh, with just as you grow the in person experience again or, or, or reinvigorate it, uh, that's going to be an area we can, that we want to help you with. I want to come back to Bill's specific question, and it came up with a lot of people. And uh, Andy and Stephanie, can you help us point us in a direction of w what what we can do to uh, to help? Um, I think specifically it was how to engage the those who are technologically ignorant. Is the way we could say that? I guess. Is that a good uh, challenge. I think challenge. challenge. Is a, is I'm a, sorry. Is challenge. Term, challenge yeah. is the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, there there's sort of two parts to it. So one is the initial like. How do I get going on something, right? What button to push? What settings do I need to have? And, and, and oftentimes once that's set up and then someone has their first experience, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or Alter Live or something else, 
uh, a Zoom, um, then that's enough. It's like, okay, I can, I can repeat that process. Now that you like, I didn't realize I needed a, a camera that I needed to get set up or something like that. But then once they're set up, they're, they're good. They've crossed over and they, it can be repeated. And then uh, I'm sure you have been on a Zoom call where someone could not figure out how to unmute themselves. <laughs> and, and at some point you start to wonder, actually, I think, I think he's doing it on purpose, right? <laughs> like he mutes or then like the host mutes that person. And then they, that's when they unmute themselves and they're like, go on, but they're not talking to anybody. They're just having a conversation with their you know, partner in the kitchen or something like that. Um, I, I haven't heard of anyone who's come up with a solution for that. Right. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, I get together with my, my, my dad frequently on zoom and it is, uh, like teaching him the, for the first time again, uh, often. Right. Uh, so, uh, if anyone else has, uh, an experience on that, but I do find that like that tech deacon thing of, I love that. People, I just love and, you know, people, they just, they love being appreciated. Like they don't feel like they're being talked down to like, okay, here's that button. They actually appreciate it. Like somebody, somebody thought about them and cared to make a phone call. And of course it often turns into a, an encounter itself uh, beyond just the, what the technology is there. Um, but yes, that first, whatever that first, you know, that first experience is, that's, that's the big speed bump, right? So that probably doesn't come as a surprise to you, but just reinforcing uh, what you probably already know. I love the tech deacon thing. If, if anything that's come out of this call today, that's awesome is creating tech deacons. And here's the thing. I think if you can create tech deacons and you a deacon automatically says someone that's older helping someone that's younger, but a tech deacon almost have to flip it. This would yes. be a phenomenal way to begin to get your young people engaged with the older people and create some synergy and community in your congregation. Uh, you will have to have someone to oversee them to make sure they do a good job with their communication and they're not being condescending or, 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 or impatient. But, but this is not something we can not address. We, we've got to figure it out and we're going to keep working it until we figure it out. Stephanie, you want to chime in here with any thoughts that's in your head? Yeah, I do think I, I, the tech deacon is one that I've, we've seen be used really effectively in that way. At, at the end of the day, technology, uh, you know, digital technology is a tool. Uh, it's like any other tool we have, we learn throughout our lives. And I, I think the, at least in my past experiences too, of having worked with older generations, um, when it comes to use of technology, 80% of the battle is confidence in their ability to use the technology. Yeah. It's not that, and I'll give a, a, a pro example. I will say my um, my husband's mother, or grandmother, um, is somebody who is so not technology savvy, but because there is a reward at the end of it, which is you know specifically for Zoom, um, because there's the reward of actually getting to connect with other people from outside of her nursing home. Um, the time that we've spent with her to train her and build her up in it, to try to overcome some of those personal doubts about, you know, the frustrating, frustrating parts of it or her inability to use it, it actually becomes a really rewarding experience and people want connection at the end of the day. I mean, we use tools because we, uh, we are finding ways of connecting with others. I mean, it, the same thing could be said of cell phones when they first came out or, you know, calling, um, but we, uh, we can learn, even at older ages, how to adapt to new technology. I really think 80% of the battle is the confidence building um, in making that feel accessible and making somebody feel like you're willing to spend the time with them because it's so important to you that they're included and not left behind. Yeah, so and good. I think what, what you say, Stephanie, there, that, that, the, that equation of the, the, the pain uh, associated with the new technology uh, uh, divided by the reward. Uh, if the reward's very high, uh, then that equation is going to turn out to be uh, uh, tolerable. Uh, if the pain is very high, uh, the reward's going to have to be much, much higher. Some of the churches we're working with, um, they do put a lot of, uh, there goes the dog, they, they do put a lot of effort into internal marketing. Now that's going to be more work for you. So it's probably the last thing you want to hear like, oh, now we got to do that. Um, but they'll do a quick little video. Uh, it might just be the pastor talking about, oh, we have this new thing. We really want you to try it. But they're also putting together some vignettes, right? So, uh, so that actually the, um, the little thing that I showed you uh, earlier, 
that's a recording. They're going to actually take that recording and have the the two women uh, talk about like, well, this is why we liked it so much. And they know it's for like 90 seconds. Uh, and they'll put that um, as part of their service and uh, part of their live stream. Now there's a little bit of chicken and egg. If you're, if you're tech phobe folks aren't looking at the live stream, then they're never going to see that, 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 um, that promotion. But uh, that's, um, that's something of uh, letting the, letting the people speak to how, you know, what the impact has been. And, you know, that's for Alter Live. It could be for whatever things that you are using, whether it's coming back in person or getting on telephone or something like that. So, but that's, um, it's work. Someone's got to record it. Someone's got to edit it. Someone's got to yeah. get, get it into the rest of your promotion. But um, that's something that we have seen uh, churches do. I would say too, I mean, the, and thank you all for sharing. I mean, it is, there is no one size fits all. Every community is different and you know your people best. Uh, and it's an ever evolving situation too, as you know, COVID unfolds. I think at the end of the day, I, I think the whatever tools or uh, methods you choose, I mean, it, it, the churches that we have worked with that I've seen be the most effective in terms of um, not getting their people to one platform or one methodology or another are the churches that have really, you know, approached it with a grassroots mentality of at the end of the day, how does each individual member, it does each individual member feel that they, their absence is not just missed, but their presence also known, you know, that they are, uh, they, they feel wanted in a space, either a virtual space or a uh, physical space. Um, some of, I'll give an example. Uh, we've had one church that's basically taken their list of members and asked for a group of volunteers, and they're moving on to Alter Live. And they're saying, all right, here's our list of members. We are going to divide and conquer all of these members. Each person is going to take 10 people that they are personally going to either do a phone tree with or a, um, you know, an individual follow-up to say, hey, um, I'm inviting you uh, to come sit with me this Sunday service. Um, let me help you with any tech issues you have. Let me um, make sure that you're known and I'm there waiting for you, that somebody is on the other side uh, wanting them to be there. That approach, I mean, it's still, I mean, there is, is never gonna be 100% of everybody. So one thing works for everybody, but that uh, ability to make somebody feel wanted and uh, you know, invited personally somewhere goes a long way. Man, I, this, I'm just excited today to have the interaction we've had with you guys. So let me wrap up today by saying a couple of things. One, we love you guys and we're here for you and we know you're fried. Uh, well, everybody except Chris, Chris is, again, he's going through the roof, but everybody else we're, we're, it's been difficult. And it, so I want you to understand 95 network, we're here for you. We want to stand with you. Uh, and, and again, we don't have the answers to things. We're going to try to help keep diving in until we find the answers. This is, we're navigating new, er, new territory. The second thing I want you to know is this, if you are a member of 95 network, ultra live will give you, you, you if you join uh, up, sign up for ultra live, they give you a 20% discount. So it's not a one-time discount. It's, it's, that's, a, that's as, long, as long as you're using it. And so if you're not, have you not even checked it out yet, I would encourage you at least check it out. Have a conversation with these guys about how maybe they could specifically help your church. And it may work for you and it may not. You know, as we've made it very clear, there is no one size fits all. But just reach out to them and understand that, it, you know, and if you're not a member of 95 uh, Network, it's just 95 bucks a year. And then that gets you access to, to that membership to, or to that connection with them. So wanted you to know about that. And, and then the other thing is this, please, uh, if you have any need, reach out to us and we will connect you with whoever you need to be connected with. Uh, man, we are so excited about what God's doing. Uh, and just if you, as you move forward, if, you're, if your focus can be that, that it's not either or, it's not either in person or online, it's both and. And, and, and I just believe that God's going to use you guys to impact your community and change the world and just lock it down in, in your heart to know that we're here for you. So thanks for joining us today. We'll be, there'll be more of these coming along. We want to make them as informative and helpful as possible. Answer the, answer the questions you're asking. And so thanks for being here today. Uh, you guys have a great week. God bless you.